will not search for things. And yet, all that you need will find you in this state. You will not be dependent on things, conditions, or personalities. You will be self-complete, resting only in the power of God. If you had the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you could change the whole world, for the whole earth is subject to your call and command. And all of nature waits upon your word with eagerness to obey. When you, who have faith in your heart, you shall ask, and it shall be done. Every prayer I have ever taught was to give this knowledge and reinforce this truth. You cannot truly understand the power of prayer until you have some correct estimation of your own measure and your place in creation and understand the power given to your consciousness. Every prayer is a step towards greater awakening. I taught my apostles not so much of prayer as how to pray. The great prayer that has become my legacy was actually a blueprint for all prayer. It is a pathway for unfolding the essence and power of prayer in your heart. The purpose of prayer is connection with God. Therefore, the first words must be to establish that connection and to honor the power of the name of God. I am that I am. From the name of God comes your own power, for you were created in the image of God. From the power of the name all things are given to you, and you may command all things through taking the name for yourself as an heir to the divine. It is translated that I said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is close to my words, but much of the teaching is lost. It really means that the father loves the child and has given all things into his or her hand. Therefore, as you are joined in the same true knowledge of self, all things and power are achieved. You need not ask for anything, for all has been given. All temporal seeking is vanity or uselessness. Every line of this eternal prayer is a brief summation of long and tireless teaching of some important point about personal reunion with God. Often the greater lesson is lost because of brevity or because the contest for expanded awareness is not revealed. The context for expanded awareness is not revealed. For instance, when it is written, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. There's a great misunderstanding. I never used the word evil, nor included it in my lessons. Evil, as you think of it today, was not in my mind or vocabulary, and I would not have portrayed, portrayed right and wrong as a black and white polarity. In Aramaic, the language of my culture, the word that translated as evil actually meant uselessness. The devil, or lord of demons, was a reference to the power of uselessness, distraction, and wastefulness, a condition of living which inevitably leads to disease, depletion, and disorientation of a soul. Your Heavenly Father would never lead you into temptation. At the same time, there is always temptation to become distracted, 
into useless diversions. If you are not confident in your relationship to God, these distractions may be indiscernible from purposeful activity. That points to the real meaning of the words. Father, allow me to feel and to know your true presence within my spirit, that I may not seek for it in worldly goals and become <coughs> distracted with vain and useless pursuits. In your presence, I am focused and dedicated to my soul's true purpose. Be with me always and abandon me not in the days of my proving. This is not a petition for help, it is an assertion of desire for higher degrees of consciousness. God is love, and your proving is that of being a spiritual being created in His image and endowed with His authority over life. Your relationship to God is by the law of grace, and that is the law of freedom. This means you have a choice in all things, including how you, how you see yourself. You were created in the light, and therein began your freedom of choice, your basic and original choice, your enduring choice was not between light and darkness. That would have been too easy because darkness is totally an illusion. By examining the nature of light, the real choice can be exposed. All the ancient seers knew, what science has confirmed, that light is omnipresent. It is a tremendous energy, and yet, without correction, it scatters. The only thing necessary for light to be turned into creation is for it to be focused and directed. Since light is only present, it has no options. Therefore, darkness did not exist until such time as that illusion is necessary. There is, however, a real choice within light. It can either be dispersed in a chaotic, random array, or be focused and ordered into creation and purposeful light. The legend of Lucifer is the personified memory of this dilemma. The real choice of the soul is not between light and imaginary darkness, but rather between purposeful light, God, and scattered light, Lucifer, which is the basis of all vanity. Light seeks to be free through man, to discharge itself, one way or another, through chaos or through directed patterns of creation. Your soul is a lens for channeling light into greater unity and creative applications. When you choose this path, you move towards fulfillment and reunion with your Creator. When light is scattered and without direction, Purpose. Life becomes confusing and depleted. Then the shadows begin to give, to give form and structure to perception. This is how your trials begin.